This is a depiction of a Chinese golden ship. It's on a golden voyage. The many scenes show the joys and tragedies of daily life. There is no bow or stern. The passengers can't tell which direction the ship is headed. Like life itself, it's an uncertain journey on an uncharted, unknown, unending sea. The discovery of gold in California in 1848 sent people from all over the world across oceans, mountains, rivers, and continents to pursue their dreams of finding vast riches. For the Chinese, it was first a dream, then a destination, finally a reality. The Chinese named their new home Gold Mountain. The journey would be about much more than the quest for gold. It became about self-determination and freedom, a story of battling racial violence and discriminatory laws. It became a story of cultures colliding, sometimes harmonizing, sometimes fracturing into bitter rivalry. The Chinese built wondrous works that created modern California. Massive levees that protected cities and towns and allowed agriculture to flourish. Stupendous railroads across mountain peaks no one thought passable. Caves that housed young America's challenge to the centuries-old dominance of the European winemakers. In building a new life in California, they created a trans-Pacific trade that transformed Hong Kong and chaotic San Francisco into world-class cities that forged a Pacific Rim trade that flourishes today. Temples rose from the California hills housing rare artifacts from Asia and America. Hello, I'm your host, Bill George. We're gonna follow the voyagers on that mythical ship and honor the hard work, perseverance, and ingenuity of the Chinese builders of Gold Mountain. This is Ren Zhuan, a Chinese artist of the 1850s. His self-portrait captures the potency of a generation undergoing immense changes in China. As young Chinese chafed under an empire that had ruled them for hundreds of years. While Ren Zhuan would not leave for California, thousands of young, ambitious men like him did. This is the Gold Mountain dream, right? You go to Gold Mountain, you go back, you send money back, and there would be land and big houses. So that when you yourself return to China one day, you'll be able to live in these big houses. The Chinese were mostly from Guangdong province in southern China, far from the throne in the Forbidden City. They went to Hong Kong, booked passage on ships there, and set sail for California. Disembarking in San Francisco, many quickly headed for Sacramento and Marysville in the 1850s, the second and third largest cities in the state. From there, they headed to the stony crevices of the motherlode, places like Fiddletown, to try their luck in striking it rich. In her book, Pacific Crossing, Dr. Elizabeth Sin of Hong Kong University looked into the lives of the Chinese who went to Gold Mountain. Everybody was trying to get into California. It was really a very global phenomenon. Well, first of all, uh, California was a place that people wanted to go to. So it, there was no duress. It was a desired destination. Either they could go on their own steam or they were um, supported by their families, or they had enough social relationships to uh, borrow money. So it was not something for people who were totally down and out. Brian Tom is the director of the Chinese American Museum of Northern California. It's in Marysville, 40 miles north of Sacramento. In my view, this was a singular event. It was, um, not only in China, but throughout the whole world. Uh, people heard about this gold rush because it was so extraordinary. Uh, you have to remember the context in which you were dealing with uh, here in California at that time. When gold was discovered, California wasn't even a state. It wouldn't become a state until 1850. But they were going through a transition period between Mexican rule and American rule. What that meant was that there was a lot of confusion and uncertainty about who owned the land. And so the saying came up that gold was free for the taking. And that was literally true because nobody knew who owned it. 
And that was an extremely unusual situation. It probably didn't exist and hasn't existed uh, since that time.